Hello all. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon. It's on wherever you are. To begin with, thank you for all your support and all your questions on the series. It took me a lot of time to think about what's the best example to do a basic authentication. And if you are new to this and if you haven't seen the previous video, I would highly recommend go back into the series and see all the videos to get the context of it. So for people who are following it, we did it uh, the first example or first two sets of example with no authentication. We found an endpoint, we tried to consume it in Business Central and now the second thing which is a common authentication mechanism that you'll see is basic, basic authentication where you end up with the username and a password which is require you to get access to the resources that are exposed by APIs. Now after a lot of searching when I didn't find anything I ended up to our default resort, which is Business Central. So today, we'll be understanding how you do basic authentication if you have to call, let's say, Business Central API uh, on-prem, where there's a basic authentication still available, or any other authent basic authentication API endpoint in summary. In the meantime, while I was doing this, I made certain changes on Android, so that it's easier to for you guys to read it so we'll first go through those changes and then we'll get into what you will have to change in terms of doing basic authentication so before we begin a humble request that if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe there are two benefits of it one it gives us motivation to keep doing if you think we are doing the good work to keep doing the work that we are doing and it also helps to reach these videos to a wider audience. So if you like the content, please do share it on your social media so that we reach to a bigger audience and you are helping your colleagues and, and your friends to doing something that you're learning. Okay, so a lot of it, let's go back to uh, business handle scenarios. Okay, so first let's talk about the updates. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, the source code is available in GitHub. The link of the source code is available in the pinned comment and also on the description of all the videos in this series. The code will be changing as we are changing, as we are doing things. So from a front end perspective, let's see what these are and then I'll explain you in detail what I did. So I made certain changes on this page. In the last video, if you remember, we talked about log entries. So the log entries action is there. And then I've created these different sections which makes it easier for you to use it and also kind of copy or extract the code to use it in your scenario. There are these actions which help you to generate the URL which are required for this and then you can do the command that's needed for it and the steps remain same. Same here, this is our second example and the third one is what we'll be doing today which is business central and I haven't built the whole one but from this is what the change that we have done recently. So if you are doing no auth authentication, you can take any of these examples into your consideration. If you are doing basic auth, you might take this section from this project and use it in your scenario. Okay, from a code perspective, I split it the app, not a split it actually, I created, I grouped the app into logical pieces. So now when you get into source folder, you will see these four subfolders into it. The core actually contains anything that should remain unchanged, hopefully, as we add more scenarios into it. So it contains one code unit, which is handling the make request and the log entries function. So it just makes the request and gives you back. And then the log entries pages are also part of it and the log entry table is also part of it which we built in the last video and then the api handler page that you saw a while ago i created right now there are three groups the group one deals with the no auth dummy rest api that we have in the first part of the series in the group two we have no auth restful api and the group three is for the basic authentication and then there are actions there are those links which are needed for it. So all that is part of this page. This is kind of your page which helps you to interact with all these. Okay. Then going forward, 
uh, then in continuation to this what I did is for each scenario that we covered I splitted them into separate folders so your dummy rest API example have set of tables which are related to this like we are interacting with the employees so there is an employee table into it and then there are associated pages to employees into it and then there are three code unit which you'll find in each scenario one which is dealing with the request and response management to the core code unit so the get post put patch delete and the process response how you want to process the response because that will vary based on each and every endpoint that we'll be consuming in the same way you will see the same set of objects in here this has header line combination if you remember the product thing that we did have the associated pages and have again three code units in the same way in the basic scenario I've already prepared this at least the, the legwork which I think everybody knows how to do it so I've created a customer table for the basic auth scenario which will which have some fields from the standard customer table and we will try to import data into it as we get into uh, today's video and then there's an associated list page and an associated card page to it to keep it very simple I don't think I have a code unit I guess yes I created an empty code unit template which is just the skeleton of the code unit which have get post put patch delete and other things and then the response handling okay so now let's come back to the today's video so what we'll be doing and let's go back to the client we'll be calling uh, this endpoint where is the endpoint oh I don't have that endpoint okay I should have it in the code somewhere let me see page API handler so we'll be calling this endpoint or we'll be referring to this endpoint as we go forward into it so what we are to do, going to do is we are going to consume the customer API which is exposed by business central environment and we'll try to do a get now this API endpoint will allow us to get the customers and if you look at the documentation of it it says retrieve the properties and relation of a customer object in business center you can replace this URL prefix based on your parameters which is get then your business central environment your company and your customers that you are getting if you are getting one customer then you need to specify the system ID of that customer uh, if you have to get a subset of it you can do an expand and if you guys are interested let me know into the comment section I make I can make a separate video for the expand if needed but right now we are doing a pretty simple one which is this it requires a request header and we're going to talk about it in a while where it says the authorization is bearer token required now this documentation is representing business central cloud where the only authentication mechanism you have is OAuth when you're dealing with on-prem you can still use OAuth if needed from on-prem but you have a way that you can use the basic authentication which comes up with a username and a password once you do that you will in return get a 200 OK if the request is successful and you'll get a customer object in response so when you make a request you'll get something like this and you can quickly check it into the postman here is my postman where I'm trying to get all the customers let's do a send and in response of it it'll something look like this all the customers that I'll have I'll get out of it so we'll do a plain and simple get of customers and we'll try to load it into a table if needed and then we'll save that data into a table which we custom table that we have created which is called as DH customer into this environment so that's the idea of it if you know how to do this it's a long intro you can skip this video and I'll see you into other video <coughs> sorry if you are into this then stay along and let's get into it 
Okay. So I said in a while ago that we'll talking about headers. So let's come into the core code unit, which is doing everything, making the request for it. Now what you see here is an header. Now header varies from API to API. And that is completely uh, dependent on the entity who is exposing the API endpoint. Like in our case, Business Central is exposing it. Now the header between line number 12, 13 and 14 is what we were using till now for no auth scenarios. Where there's no authentication needed, so you can live with it. But while you are consuming Business Central API or any basic authentication API, you will have to tweak this header based on whatever that endpoint is requiring. So that makes it a good candidate to move this section out of it into the scenario code units. And okay, X API endpoint, if you want to do it, just provide me the header that I need and I'll live with it. Now, if you look at it, the content header here is only one thing, which is content type application JSON. Whereas in case of business central, and I'm emphasizing the word business central, because as I said, it is completely dependent on the entity who is going to make that uh, API available for you. In that, you will surely have to pass the auth authorization, which is a username and password, how you are going to connect to it. And then you also have to pass an header called accept application with the value application JSON. And all these header values are name, value, pair, combination. So this is the name and this is the value. So till now, whatever we did on the basic auth, this was the mandatory requirement. Whereas in case of business central one, this first part changes to accept. And then the parameter remains same. And then you also additionally will also have to pass the authentication header, which is the username and password. Now, so this we will move out to the scenarios code unit, and then we'll see how we shape it up. But before doing that, let's come back here on Business Central and let's go into the users page. First thing first, uh, I'm still not sure that can you do it with Windows authentication or not. I don't think you can because uh, it requires a web service access key and then the username has surely something, which is the domain name and all with the Windows. But with the nav username password credential, if you're using in your on-premise environment, you can set up in username password configuration, which I have right now, you get an access to the web service access key. While interacting with the API, the web service access key becomes your password. And your username remains your username. So you have a way to log in into this business central environment and let me log out. And I surely don't remember my web service access key. But when I'm logging in, I'm just entering whatever password I have. That allows me to get access to this environment. But while I'm interacting with APIs, my password is not the password that I have. My password becomes whatever I have the web service access key. So this key will become my password to interact with the web service applications that I'm using. Hopefully that is clear. So whenever we are building our authorization header, which is the username and the password combination, we'll be referring to this web service access key and not my password, just FYI. Okay, so let's come back to this. Let's talk about it. Okay, so we said we want to move this uh, out these two lines to be very fair because these are header elements that are needed in my API endpoint but having said that this gets added and you know first retrieved retrieved from the content of it so somehow I also need to get the content out so that I build all this into it oh but content is also writing in case of post and other 
the payload into the content so I actually will have to move all this outside into the scenarios code unit and say okay you define the scenario and I'll deal with it so in that case what happens your client which becomes your HTTP client which is then coming from here because when you build this you also have to set this onto your client right so let let me kind of update you so like when you do the content header here and let's let's first try to do this okay so if I have to extract this piece because this is used nowhere what I can do and let's first try to fix whatever the scenarios that are working hopefully in this code unit mm, where I have request response management uh, what I can do is when I'm making all these calls I can tweak this so that it helps me to get my content header into it right so let me make a procedure here and let me call it uh, procedure mm, get content and this somehow will return the content that I need which is an HTTP content okay. Begin end. and in this I somehow need to pass this so whatever was in the core which is this part I'll just copy this part so that I can just pass it okay well it's copy I don't see the copy okay copy and I'll paste it here which will need what the payload the content header pieces okay so I'll remove it from here for the time being and I'll need the payload so I don't need to pass the payload and I also need the content headers okay so let's do content headers where is content header okay let's move it from here because this is not used anywhere here and I'll just plug in here as a variable okay that's all some of the problem the only thing that is left is payload so let's break it sorry but I'll have to break it so what I'll do is I'll remove the payload from here I'll not pass the payload which will break all my scenarios at this moment but don't worry we'll fix them and here what I'll do is I'll pass the payload here somehow okay so once I have the payload I'll get the content header out of it so what I can do is I can do content header content with header okay and then I'll add this content into a parameter that I'm oh, oh, sorry yeah the function parameter that I have so I'll get the content and then it'll go forward from here so to get the content what I'll do is I'll just plug this in into all my calls here there will be an error hopefully yes which will call this function instead of sending the payload now it will send the content header okay so this will automatically get the payload add the payload into the content and then send it back in the same way I'm going to do it in each and every method so that I don't have to do it again and again okay going forward here let's add it let's go at the end let's add it here and if it is okay I'll zoom this out I normally zoom this in so that you guys can see it clearly but let's zoom it out so that I can actually do it quickly okay okay and then the last but not least is this sounds fair hopefully that works okay now let's quickly get into it and let's copy this as it is into my other scenario of the dummy rust API and here 
I'll just add this also and then we'll call this everywhere where there's an error okay come on let's get added sounds great okay let's get added great let's get added you also look good okay okay so if everything is good everything compiles hopefully everything is good <laughs> let's test it out let's publish it and because that helps us to kind of work on the basic art because we will have to generate the header in a different way for the basic art so once this gets published we'll be able to first verify that it is it is it working or not and i haven't set up my services for on-prem correctly i have this problem but that's okay okay let's test this out uh this is uh, the employee page on this so let's see there are no employees into it mm, let me do sdh so that i only get mine there's nothing on it so let's do a generate url it should get all my employees let's do a get let's search for sdh employees oh so this is working if this is working everything else is working hopefully Let's verify it here. Press API object. This is my product table. So let's look at the product table. Oh, there is data. So let's do a delete all. And I also added this button on every page so that you can test it out. Okay. So here it's also working. So we have successfully moved that header piece into a separate code unit. Okay into the calling coordinate now let's come up to come to us and let's talk about the basic auth scenario for which we are here so i'll close these scenarios and i'll focus on the basic auth scenarios and we'll come here okay having said that um, on the basic auth as we said there are two important factor one is the username and one is the password so for simplification perspective rather than hard coding it i have made them available here so on this page in the core i have the function to or i have these fields which allows me to do the get request here and i can then call the business central base auth get record request which will then take me to this function now we'll just copy and paste from existing scenarios right we don't want to waste our time into it so let's get into this code unit and let's copy paste the get statement as it is okay and let's plug that in here okay so first thing first I am why there is this variable my bad oh that that's needed okay so i surely am getting an error on the get content with header so i need to define this function so let's create a local procedure here so that we can define the header for this particular element now as we were saying the problem that why we move that into a separate set is because we wanted to uh, get the payload here which is of type text and then based on this text we'll create the authentication header which will return me the content now in case of the basic auth you will need the access to username and password on this particular code unit where you are so what let's do a procedure here to kind of get those so let's do a local procedure to set uh, username and password okay which will require a username into text and then also a password into text okay 
Do you know that there is a secret text? If you don't, let me know into the comments and we'll talk about it. Okay. So once you have it, what you can do is begin and end. And then what we'll do is we will get the username from a past username and we'll set it here. And the password becomes the past username or past password. Oh, I wrongly spelled it. Not here, on here. Okay, right. so that's. So now I have to define these two. So I'll just go ahead here and do a username, comma, password of type text. Okay. Now I need to call this function so that I can get access from the page to those values. So on the page, uh, not on this page, on the core page, while calling this get request, before this I'll call basic auth request management dot set. And did I not make it local? My bad. Oh, global. Okay. I can do a set username password with username which is here and password that user keyed in onto this page All right i hope that's password yes so this method will set these two values in here and i'll have access to my username and password once i have that i am surely copying whatever is there onto other authentication headers so let's copy that first and see what changes with that okay let's save some time okay so if the payload is not equal to empty i need to write the payload so that remains same nothing changes over here at this point when i have to kind of set this uh, i'll have to get the default header from the HTTP client which is being used and that is not here okay that's off because my HTTP client is actually here hmm now that becomes a problem because what you do in at least in the base basic auth of business central you have to get the default header which are set by default which are part of this so i can't have it here and i can't kind of put it out because based on this the send is happening so what i'll do is i'll also have to sorry but i also have to move it here okay now this http client everything fails makes sense comes here and then gets passed back to the to the method that's then setting it up right so because i'll be doing it on every places so i'll just make it global for the time being which is http client and let's understand fi first why we have to bring this up before we start fixing everywhere else. And then this will get the, uh, it, it also need to part of it so that it gets the right values into it. So I'll just add it in here also as a request. Now this then comes here and also get added as aware so that it gets returned into it so let's say update client of type http client okay so now the first thing when you do the basic auth is you have to get the default headers from the client how you do that it's super simple you say i have my content headers and i want to get whatever is in default from my update client dot get not get oh default request header 
Now this gives the system to access to whatever the default headers were set into this variable. And then you append on these to the values that you need. And how they are different from the earlier examples that we did, that here you will have to pass the content headers and then do a addition of first thing is accept and the value, let's copy it from here, let's save some time, which is this, it's a mandatory header for this, with a central basic auth, API endpoint, and then you also have to pass the authorization. So let's do it before this. So I need to pass my authorization header, which is authorization, and here I need to pass my username and password. Now there are different ways that you can pass it. You can just type in the things. The only thing that you need to remember that you can't directly pass your plain text username and password. The mandatory requirement is also that your username and password is converted into a base64 value. So what we'll do, we'll create a separate function to get authorization header. Okay, and this will return me what I need. So let's create a procedure here. And this will return me a text, right? And let's call it as auth string text, authentication string text. So now I have the username and the password. So what I'll, what I just need to do is I need to add this onto this new variable that I created. And I'll say, okay, uh, substitu string substitution and I'll pass the username and password parameters and then I'll say assign it to username and the second value to password now and not these these dots this is <laughs> the average general business central filtration like this username colon password is what you need to pass but remember what I said a second or a, a while ago that this need to be converted into base64 so there's a built-in code unit which is called uh, base64 helpers or something like that or convert convert which is of code unit of base64 convert now this helps you to convert your value into a base64 value then what you do is you kind of pass and set authentication string to the base64 convert and then say convert it to base64 and there are other methods so if you have a base64 value in any other projects that you're working on you can do a from base64 to a plain text and you can do a plain text to base64 by using the to base64 and then pass whatever you want which is this this will convert it into a base64 value. There's one more thing. You can't just plainly pass this. What you have to pass is actually, let's do a string substitution. And here, the authorization header is actually passed as basic. And then whatever your username password value is, which is something like this. And then you just append it with the auth string. So our output is basic and then the encrypted or base64 converted value for my username password combination with this separator. Now this function will return that and this will then get added in to my header. And you don't have to pass any of these after that. You just have to pass this and this will become your header if I have put the semicolon here for my basic auth and that's the reason we had to bring the update client here so that we can first get the default request header and on top of it we can then add additional headers into my request for authorization which is username and password and then the accept as application JSON with just this it'll return the content and it'll also update the HTTP client which then will be gone to the actual code unit which is calling it oh 
we have an error here for payload generator let's fix this so we haven't defined it but if you look at other code units or other scenarios you will see that there is a payload generator on every code uh, every scenario and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this plain and simple as it is and I'm going to place it into basic auth scenario and let's create a new L file of that code unit and we'll call it as SDH uh, this is customer API payload MGMT hopefully that, that should work okay finish this and I'm just going to paste it here now I might not use all of these and I surely will not use all of these but for right now I'll just remove whatever is not needed which is this uh, yeah I'll keep this as it is so even in the scenarios where you don't need a payload like in case of get or in some scenarios you also need it don't need it for delete and then I can't comment on every uh, API endpoint I have created a blank function which just returns blank to keep symmetry with all these code units so if you have a scenario you just plug in your payload here and if you don't then you live with it right so what I can do is I can just refer this code unit which is just running blank in case of get in here and this then will compile at least which is my first need okay so this compiles and that should be able to pass and execute my basic auth get scenario but before we get into it I also have to fix all these right because that otherwise will become a bigger problem of not passing this so let's copy this client on all these code units first because that's the variable that we created so on this let's add this and then also on this let's add this uh, here okay edit this okay let's keep the symmetry into the get content with header scenario which is this so I'll change the I'll copy this as it is I'll plug in in the get content header and I'll also plug in in here I'm just trying to make the functions look alike so that it's easier for you to kind of understand the difference that we are doing with it right so now once we have done that um, we can also do a get oh we were doing a get header so what we are doing with the update client here nothing we are not doing anything but just for the symmetry I'm bringing it here and then here we'll just start plugging in that client parameter everywhere okay so let's add it in here oh, my shortcuts are misleading sometimes okay. comma and then also add it here just to keep it in symmetry okay uh, let me copy this it will be easier in that case okay and here too and then I have it before so I'll place it here let's keep placing it here here okay so this kind of compiles this particular code unit we don't need it but just to keep the symmetry into the system we just keep it simple okay hopefully that works and you guys don't get angry yeah he's doing all his deck work here I didn't thought about it I should have done it but that would have made it a little bit complex for you to understand what kind of changes I'm making even if I knew it so it was good in hindsight okay so let's close everything whatever we have talked about we did make some changes here and there but that's okay but in summary what we did is here we made a get request we said okay make a get request we'll give you the client which will get updated into this method and this method defines my uh, content header which comes with an authorization which is a base 64 value of your username and your web service access key which is your password in this case with this format that get added into my header and then the other header that I need is 
app except application of this one now in your scenario if you're dealing with the basic api which is not business center you can have it and they have five more header requirement you can just keep appending them here on this function if they have less requirement you can just start reducing things from here that's the idea okay now once the request happens i get the response into my response message which is passed as uh, which is the written value of this and then what i do with that response message is i process it so right now for processing it i've kept it simple because it's taking a lot of time i guess we took a lot of time um i'm just showing it into a uh, message just to keep it simple and hopefully we'll decide to kind of read it if needed okay so with this we should see the response of all the customers that i have in my system when i try to call that endpoint now to do that i'll have to get access to my web service access key so let's go back in here uh let me copy my web service access key okay coming back here into my api handler page we'll deal with other examples later if you look at it this is my hard coded value of my api endpoint which is localhost 7048 240 which is a service name api the static keyword version 2.0 of api the company that i'm looking at and then the endpoint that i want which is customers my username is whatever my username is and my password is whatever my web service access key is once i have done that and i've set the get url i can just do a get and in response it should return me a json of whatever the customers that i have in system and i should be able to copy this go into a json beautifier i like these tools because they help me to kind of read the json value and that surely will help you when you are trying to um you know read this and then extract it into a table right so i can just do a beautifier and what i see is what we saw in the beginning in postman the there is a o data context of the endpoint that you have called and then there is a value which have which is an array and then inside that array the each customer gets an object so what do you have to do if you are reading it you have to look for the value array and if you find the value array then you have to start um tracing into that array for all the items that are there into the array and then read that data and put it into a business center whatever you want i think we go a little bit beyond today i didn't expect this to be this long but what we'll do in the next video of the series we'll try to for surely write the data that we get from the get output into a table that we have created we have some fields into it and then we'll surely easily will be able to cover all these scenarios uh regarding the basic auth right so all the basic auth scenario should be covered into the next video of it starting with completion of whatever we are doing in the get so sorry for that i'll make sure that we complete the get part of reading it into a table or reading it from the response and then writing it into a table record and once that is completed we'll surely talk about how you do the post patch because those are kind of on the similar lines nothing major changes other than the payload at the end of it so we'll try all those commands in the next video in the meantime before i start recording the next video if you have any suggestions add it into the comment section if there's anything that was confusing into this video again you know the drill add it into the comment section If you hated the comment hit the dislike button that's okay. If you like the content hit the like button. And if there is a scenario that I haven't covered let me know into the comment section. I might not do it instantly. Sorry for that if you want it right now. But based on my schedule that I have whatever time permits for me I'll make sure that I cover those scenarios that you are asking into the comments. You know the drill here, right? As I said in the beginning share your knowledge with others in the community. so you have your social media account hit the share button share it there um if you haven't subscribed do subscribe to the channel and if you are still here and if you are not still participating into the bc quiz which is happening on instagram there are only what 3 days left now for the quiz 
but we might start a next season of it the first season was focused on to the table properties we might get a little bit deep into the table and then surely move further till the point you guys want it right so let me know your views onto the pc quiz some people have requested that once the quiz is over i should have all the questions in youtube i should have an answer video into it and i should have a detailed explanation explanation video for it i'm sure i'll i'll give it a try i'll try to make all those videos that you guys are requesting till then your wish is our command keep learning keep sharing whatever you are learning and then business central 25 is coming so we'll be talking about that going forward so go ahead hit that subscribe button and i'll see you sooner than later into the next video about something about business central and for sure about the completion of this video on the get command thank you have a nice day